Okay, for the fifth part of Lab Workshop 1B, I sort of gave you a challenge. The challenge was to recreate a standard normal table. And this is actually an example of when you might want to use absolute references that only put the dollar signs on columns and, and, and on rows. So I'm going to start a new worksheet at the bottom here. We'll call it standard normal table. And I'll start out with how the table sort of distributes the Z values. So down the first column here, we have 0 0.0, 0.1, 0.2, 0.3. And as we saw before, I can actually continue that series by just dragging it down. I want to go to 3.4 to duplicate this table. So there's the 3.4. The first row across the top, I got 0 0.00. .00. Zero point zero one, zero point zero two, zero point zero three, and I can again take that, drag it over to point zero nine. Okay. I can for each of these I can also say that I want a certain number of decimals. So I've got it showing one decimal in the in the column here, and it's showing two decimals across the top. Now, the rest of these cells are going to be probabilities. And the challenge I gave you was to put a formula in one of these cells that will then that you can then copy to all the rest of the cells and it will work. So I'm going to start with um, I'll start with any cell here. I'll start say here. And for this cell I want the standard normal probability for a Z value of 0.59, right? So I can start out and say equals, I want the standard normal, so norm.s.dist, choose that function, and it says what value of Z do you want? So I want, for this particular cell, I want the value of, of z to be this value, 0.5, plus 0 0.09. And then I'm going to say true, because we're always dealing with, uh, with cumulative probabilities. Remember, with the, nor with the standard normal distribution, I don't need to tell it a mean or a standard deviation because it knows that it has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So that will give me the probability in this particular cell. And I can check that against my screen, and it actually isn't correct. The, the sample that I gave you was 0.2224, and this says 0.7224. So the reason why there's a difference is if we look at the diagram at the top of the table that I gave you, it's only counting the probability from the mean up to this value. 
because we're only looking at positive values. We're not looking at any negative values of z. So what I have to do is I have to take this particular value, this probability, and subtract 0.5, which is going to be the half of the probabilities less than 0 or on the other side of the mean. So minus 0.5. So now I have 0.224 is what my chart says. I can reduce the number of decimals here until it just reads 0.224 because I only want, I only need five, four decimals. So that is getting the correct probability for us in this particular cell. Now, how do I get this so I can copy it to other cells? In any cell, what I want it to do is I want it to go to column A of whatever row I'm in. So if I put the dollar sign in front of the A, it will go to column A, but the row remains as a relative reference. So that's what I want. As far as the second, the K1 uh, reference, I want it always to go to row 1, but I want it to go to stay in whatever column I'm in. So I can put the dollar sign in front of the 1 and say enter. And say so now I should be able to copy this cell and paste it to any other cell. So we'll try it here. So for 0.60 it's telling me that my value is 0.2257, and that matches my standard normal chart. So I can actually copy that formula with the function in it, copy it to all the rest of the cells here, and I get my standard normal table. I'll put my borders around the top and borders along the bottom. And I've got a table that looks just like the table that you were given in part five. So that's the answer to the challenge that I gave you for part five of Lab Workshop 1B.